On January 26, 1861, the state of Louisiana seceded from the Union. But just 15 months later, a federal fleet steamed up the Mississippi River and forced New Orleans, the largest city in the Confederacy, to surrender. Union occupation signaled the new birth of freedom for the city's black population and unleashed a burst of creative energy. It's the fact of the abolition of slavery that made jazz music possible. It comes from a consciousness of those who are outside of something but in the middle of it. These are people who are American in the realest sense but they've been denied access to recognition as Americans. But that doesn't alter the fact that they are American and the fact that they have access to all of the information that Americans have access to. For 12 years after the Civil War, in the period known as Reconstruction, federal troops occupied the South, enforcing civil rights and overseeing America's first attempt at integration. But in 1877, in a corrupt backroom deal between Northern Republicans and Southern Democrats, the troops were withdrawn and Reconstruction collapsed overnight. White rule was brutally reimposed. Sharecropping replaced slavery. The Ku Klux Klan was ascendant and lynchings became routine. Every aspect of daily life for African Americans became segregated under a system that someone named for Daddy Rice's minstrel hit, Jim Crow. Eventually, Jim Crow conquered New Orleans as well. In 1890, the Louisiana legislature decreed that blacks and whites must occupy different cars on trains traveling within the state. Two years later, a New Orleans Creole of color named Homer Adolph Plessy set out to test the new law, boarding an excursion train and insisting on sitting in the whites only car. He was arrested, tried and convicted. In 1896, in the case of Plessy versus Ferguson, the Supreme Court of the United States upheld his conviction. Separate but equal facilities, it said, were constitutional. That decision would govern life in the American South and in New Orleans for nearly 60 years. City theaters and restaurants were now strictly segregated. Black and white boxers and bicycle racers and baseball teams were forbidden to compete against one another. The state legislature then passed a law barring all would-be voters whose grandfathers had been slaves. Where 95% of the city's black men had been registered to vote, just 1% was now eligible to go to the polls.